This is our 2006 Toyota Estima Hybrid, which is Toyota's first use of the E4 all-wheel drive that is in the brand new Sienna that we only got in like 2019. And this is a 2006 from Japan. So, this is a 2006 Estima Hybrid. For anyone wondering, the Estima Hybrid is basically the 2AZ motor, I believe it is, which is the 2.4 liter Toyota 4 cylinder right there. There's a 13 horsepower electric motor. 13? 17? Some, uh, not very powerful electric motor sandwiched in there. And then a CVT transmission. And then, Notice there's this power cable going down here beside the exhaust. And then this right here is the rear electric motor. 28 horsepower, something like that. Four cylinder, it's about 145 horsepower from the engine. Um, incredibly reliable engines. These ones were known for sometimes burning a little bit of oil, but still lasts forever. And then over here, there's the control module for the hybrid motor, which is sandwiched between the gas engine and the CVT transmission, which in these is apparently quite reliable with uh, good service. Here's a shot from directly above the engine. It's entirely underneath. Yeah, yeah, that's how much space you have to work on everything. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't thinking about the guy working on it as much. So, again, power doors, they got like sensors in them, so they don't really see that. If you bump into them, they just turn around. So um, what's really, really cool about this, this middle row, these captain seats, is beyond just having the curtains, when I guess the best curtains are the ones between the kids and you, you can just close them off. So these ones unclip here. A little annoying when you undo the windows on the highway because they, they tend to come loose and flap around. I've got elastic bands on that one. Um, but these seats do a lot of things. So again, minivans are just cool. So you've got this front to back motion, which is nice. It's quite a lot of travel. Well, you don't even know the hold of it. So if I hit this one, it'll go, the seat goes in. And then he wants to see travel. Wow. And then, foot rest. Let That's me, the cool middle row. I got into bed in the trunk of my car, so I, I gotta get in there. Oh, okay, yeah, here. Try those seats out. You can go back further with the I other one. I feel like I'm at the dentist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, you can go, you can way. tilt that back further, actually go full flat. How, which one? Which uh, one further back, that one right there, yep. <laughs> yeah, so there's your camping setup. That's You're crazy. what? You're like six, six foot? That's yeah. You're still... <laughs> more room. Like yeah. There's... Now you can only go back that far when the third row is folded in the floor, but... Uh, yeah. That's crazy. And then when we get that seat back to its more typical position... Little cable. Cable. Ignore the yogurt on it. This is active daily duty for my kids, so... But, uh, yeah. And then here with the hybrid battery again, you got 1500 watts, the 100 volt plug. With the ground. Yeah. Right. And you got your uh, VGA to run your PlayStation or whatever you want to run on the screen. So I was playing Grand Prism on the back of this. That's crazy. So, uh, yeah. It's actually a fun thing. Um, let's go check out the back. The two front doors and the rear hatch. There's uh, sensors for when the key is near you, so you can lock and unlock it with just a key in your pocket. There's buttons here to uh, unlock it, and if you have the key in your pocket, you can, you can just hit that smaller one and lock the, the whole vehicle again. So in the back of these, you can see how far back those rails go. We've got your battery back here. That's a battery. Then, these did not come with a spare. They offer for the seats folding flat in the back. There's a tire inflator kit that I have out right now, but it goes in there with the jacket and everything. And then 
your third row is in here. All right, so you can just lift the floor out of that. And I'll just place it down here for a moment. It kind of folds up, and that's useful here in a moment. So I'll just slide that out of the way a bit. Uh, see if I can do this all with one hand. Oh, I remember the order here. Hold on. I need to catch up on my Japanese. Uh, da -da -da -da. Try this one first. Okay. And then there you go. Headrests and everything. Pop it back down. There's your rear seats. That up, clip it in. That up. And then there's the armrest and the lap belt there. And then, let's see if I can pop this back in. There we go. So, see why that folds? You just pop it back in. There. Yeah, that popped in. Seats are folded up. And then that just pops in more like that. Minivans, man. You can fit so much back here. Yeah, super convenient. And there's another plug back here for the one, 100 volt. Uh, 1500 watt with the fuse and then the previous owner replaced all of these little light bulbs with LEDs which is kind of nice although you get it's still an older car <laughs> you push on the the panel and the light goes off <laughs> oh. there's a switch but well, Jay how do you know what the warnings are on your dash guessing <laughs> Uh, no, Google Translate's really good nowadays. It's made importing these much easier. I can understand this. I actually programmed my phone to work with it. And then I changed the battery and that's that way to do it again because it is difficult. But it is loose. And I was looking at the buttons. You got an EV mode. Yeah, so under a certain speed, I think it switches over 40 kilometers an hour. It'll stay on battery only even though it's a small battery pack with only like 40 horsepower. And then snow mode is just your throttle mapping. It just it just makes the throttle uh, the opposite of sensitive. It makes it an insensitive jerk. Um, but yeah, this shows your charge state of everything, and there's your fuel history. That's crazy. And I can, What's this one here? Uh, that one is your screen settings. Okay. And then your audio, which power uh, button. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. The highest you can go in a in Japan for a radio station, they go 76 to 90, and uh, we go 87 to 107.9 is the highest frequency here. So we have much higher frequency, but at least by putting a band frequency shifter behind this radio, I can start listening to some of the stations available here. That's a plus. Yeah. Um, we don't get any of the Japanese TV, unfortunately. Yeah, there is a hard drive built in, and I have some Japanese music that's probably going to start playing, so I'll turn that off. And then I've got a uh, Paw Patrol DVD in there right now, so that's cool. Um, and yeah, so I can hit this button and that turns on the rear screen there. Google Translate is really helpful with all this stuff, so it's got the ability to play movies. The DVDs, you have to, you have to burn them. So we own this DVD, it wouldn't work in here because it's a region one, I believe. I don't know about the DVD industry, they didn't like DVDs from Japan working here, and DVDs from here working in Japan, so. I gotta work in, you just gotta burn, re, like, rip and burn your DVDs again. Wow. And then they work, so. Any movie the kids want, they gotta give me like two days notice. <laughs> but at least it's there. But yeah, it's got all kinds of interesting things. It's got displays in the dash. So even if you don't want to use this screen to uh, oops, the mileage. to monitor, you, you can actually watch it on that little display up there. Um, and uh, you show your range. And your, in Japan, they do it kilometers per liter, not liters per liter kilometer. Interesting. It requires a bit of math, but when it's 10, it's 10. There is a bunch of GPS settings and like you can, this is stuff that only works in Japan, 
but yeah, this is favorite for the GPS. Um, and you can listen to you can do your karaoke machine hookup. <laughs> you, can, you can check in with your stock market stuff. Uh, you can ask for help. There's a is this, is this the emergency button or should my crown is the emergency button? It has the HVAC is interesting in this because it has the rear controls and everything. But there is also the ion filter, which is this little button here. So if there's a lot of pollen, that helps just run everything through a, a basically a HEPA filter. And yeah, they do some ionizing, so something with electronics here. Yeah, I think it's more of a jumbo. But extra level of filtration uh, if you got allergies. So I wish it worked to get all the daycare viruses out of there. Um, there is some weird aftermarket stuff that was in this from Japan. So someone put in some mirror buttons. So these turn off and on. There's, I only know what two of them do. But they turn off and on the auto down. So the whole reverse the mirrors are tilt down. The aftermarket you need to use is messed up so it wouldn't return to the right height. Is, I'm going to stop you real quick. Is that a little quarter mirror? Yeah, there's also light in there for when you're supposed to use and what is it looking at? The, your door still? Yeah, right now I'm seeing the, yeah, it seems to be from the curb. Wow. The curb, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's got power folding mirrors and everything. Oh, I, mean, I got it set right now so when the door's locked, they automatically fold in. Which I think is actually working as well. It's got auto leveling. <laughs> oh, cool. Nine four four. Nice. Uh, it's got auto leveling headlights and they can turn a little bit. power doors for the rear. Because it's a hybrid and the hybrid battery pack's in here, it's got an inverter kind of built in for high voltage. That's nice. And in Japan, they run on 100 volt, which our stuff works with. Um, yeah, it's got power door controls up here for your lights. This is a little map light, which new cars almost all have now, but back then it was kind of cool. This lights up at night. So, couple colors. You have them covered. Yeah. Gives a clean look. Yeah, this got This car, we purchased this because we had two kids. Our second kid just arrived and we had dogs. And our SUV was kind of annoying. Not as convenient as you would hope. Minivans are better in almost every way, unless you're actually off-roading or, or hauling a trailer. If you're just doing commuting stuff with kids, minivans do make a lot of sense. But they're not cool and they're boring. So this is cool and interesting. Um, this is my way of avoiding a lot of excess money because in 2020, 2021, we bought this. Uh, shit was crazy expensive. Five year old Sienna with 200,000 kilometers was still like almost 30 grand. And five years in Canada, it already had the starting of rust. Hmm. So. I strolled by someone with a Honda, uh, Honda Elysion, Elysion, and it looked really good, and I started looking at importing them, and I managed to get this imported taxes in and everything for 10.8 with 130k on it, and now we're at 150k. Um, in my budget, I budgeted for a new hybrid battery because hybrid batteries tend to wear out at that age, and sure enough, it did, so that's all factored in. It's still under, under 14 grand for this vehicle as it sits now. You got a video of yourself uh, diagnosing and fixing it. Your... Yeah, that was what started the YouTube channel was uh, there was no video of anyone in English doing any work on these, uh, taking the actual battery pack out and rebuilding it. There were some people doing tests in the digital cells, or, but no one doing the work of actually taking it apart. So I uh, decided to film it when I had to take it apart again to replace a, a, one of the new cells that failed under warranty. And now I have a YouTube channel, so check that video out up here. Here, 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 here. Nobody ever knows, really. It's gonna. I, I'm, I think I can put it where I want. <laughs> um, yeah. So really convenient thing to have. It's got storage everywhere. You've got two glove boxes on your side. Two of them. You got just like the Rav Four. Box one. Oh jeez, we haven't emptied that in a while. And there's diapers. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's minivan wipes. And then here we've got sunglasses and registration and insurance and a popsicle stick, a nail file. Guess who drives this one more? 
And then I got a giant change thing here. Oh, let's put this back. Let's see, all the factory stuff. Good day to be a cigarette lighter. That's a big change dish. Yeah, for people who have money. My money does jiggle jiggle. It doesn't fold. Um, yeah, and it really is, it's a lot of Toyota stuff, so we've had no issues with it yet, apart from the battery, which was expected given its age. Um, yeah, a nice driving vehicle. I have no idea what these do up here. There's four of them. They're just mm. antenna thingies. I think they might be for the, the, the Japanese TV signals. Yeah. So you could get TV through a provider. Yeah, and someone has done something in this. Car. Someone has done something in this van where I can drive and the DVD plays on the screen as well as that screen. And I don't know how to turn it back to like that's not legal here, but I don't know how to fix it, so be sure to turn it off before the officer comes to the window. <laughs> uh, the gauges. So on the left side you've got your odometer and trip meter. And then your fuel gauge. And then the next one between the fuel gauge and the speedometer is your instantaneous fuel mileage. So the higher that is, the better you're doing. Yeah. And then on this side, a lot of people don't know what these are here, but the oh, I just hit the EV button with my elbow. Um, the one closest to the speedometer under the ready, which is sometimes the only way you can tell the thing is on. The one, the one just to the right of the speedometer is your power consumption and region so that will go blue as you hit this as you use more accelerator pedal and it'll actually go below the zero mark and be green when you're regening under braking or even just coasting and then beside that you've got your air conditioning and your electrical draw okay so if I just turn off the air conditioning button that middle gauge there is your air conditioning usage power drain from your AC compressor. And then the one to the right is your power. So, your electricity, the one on the far right is your electricity drain. If I turn the headlights on, it jumps up a bit. Turn them off. Yeah, yeah that's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, it's a quirky thing. Shout out to Doug. Yeah. Um, on here, there is some other interesting stuff, actually. I'm trying to remember all the weird things about this thing. I've been driving it for a year now. I've had it a little over a year. Um, it has cameras on the nose and on that mirror for looking at your parking job. If I hit this view button, I get the nose camera on the heads up display. So that is great for parking. You can get really close when you have your nose camera. It automatically turns off above five kilometers an hour. Hmm. Yeah. And then if I hit it again, I get the camera in the mirror to show how I did not park on the street. So let me back up and see if I can. Oh yeah, I get the reverse camera too. But I can switch between them, I believe, one in reverse, yeah. There's a button on the wheel, and then I can see, oh, no. Gotta get it just right. There, because in Japan they will accept nothing less than Perfection. Yeah. So why is it screaming at you when you're in reverse? It's uh, my crown does that too. I don't know if it's a Toyota thing or if it's a Japanese regulation, but they beep when you're in reverse so you don't forget. I don't know. It's reverse beepers. It's not an industrial truck. Um, on this shifter, it has drive. Sport, which is hilarious. Not very sporty. You get an S in the dash, and then B, which is battery. So that is almost like a single pedal drive. It does it, it ups the regen significantly. So you got 40 horsepower of braking. That's so, that's pretty good. Yeah, it, you you can almost entirely drive it with one pedal. Um, it's a bit harder on the batteries to charge them like that, so I don't typically do it. Having already had to replace the batteries, I'd like to not have to do it again, so, um, yeah. What's this red thing? Oh yeah, get closer to that. Okay, so, this is the thing with minivans, they're so boring usually. This minivan, 
definitely has a little flair. <laughs> Let's joke Ben while we make. We can cut that out. Oh, what's that parking sensor thing? What'd you do? That open something? <laughs> Why don't you turn that off? <laughs> okay. So, we won't see it really under full UV mode because it's cold today and we have the heat on. Um, the first time you ever do the drive anything under a full EV mode, it is weird. But it has that electrical whirring noise to it. And a four-cylinder. It's an early CVT, but it's not a Nissan CVT, which is important. So these are actually known for being quite reliable, getting two, three hundred thousand kilometers out of them regularly with reasonable service, so um, I hope it doesn't mess around. It is a true CVT. Um, around like 2009, 2010, a lot of the CVTs that were out there, and they are a good design for efficiency, um, a lot of them started programming in fake gears because no one liked the sound of the, this generation of CVTs. This generation of CVTs, the engine RPM is directly linked to your throttle position. If I accelerate, it stays at that exact tone and pitch the entire time you're getting on the highway. Yeah, it's, it, it drones. Um, and that was like, you know, 60% throttle. If you're actually going full throttle, it's really bad. So I see why they did it. Um, but the efficiency gains are insane with this. So this thing regularly averages daily driving force of 8 liters under K, about 30 miles per gallon in the US. Um, whatever other units you want, but uh, it reads 12 and a half kilometers per liter on the, on the Japanese display, which is fantastic for a 7-seater vehicle. Modern hybrid ones, like $50,000 Sienna's for sale now, the 2023 model, do slightly better. They get like 7. So, all minivans locally available in North America from this generation typically average between 10 and 14 years. So, the savings is fantastic. And you get the added benefit of all wheel drive. So, this has a 28 horsepower motor on the rear axle, which is great for just not getting stuck in the snow, which is really the main purpose of all wheel drive. You're not going to be winning in the rally stages in your minivan. Yeah, you can reach in through it all the time. acceleration run. Oh. All right, it's damn near zero here. Let's get it stopped. Right, we'll we'll make it a little down. uphill. All right. And flat to the floor. Is you 
Whiskey. It's mm. bespoke. They sold these in Australia as the Virago and in China as the Previa, actually. It's still sold as the Previa. And you see the familiar resemblance to the original we got here. Um, the hybrid was only available in Japan. So that battery I had to source overseas. If you had both vehicles like that and something happened to them and you need like it's your only source of transportation, you could get by with the crown because it's all the mechanicals of it are common with the North American model. So I can go get parts at a local store, just say I can work for a Lexus GS350. Mm. So you're just for reference, your other car is a crown. What is, yeah, my other car is a 2006 crown athlete. Yeah, super. We've been driving for a while now. We had a hard acceleration run. We're still averaging 14 kilometers per liter, which is like mid seven liters per hundred k. I'll put it up on the screen, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's stupid good on fuel. I'll try to reach in here for a moment. So, so that foot off? It re no, that's foot off. The speed at all. So now, like, you gotta put the pedal at like 15% for it to be uh, coasting. So, if I let go of the throttle, that's full reach in. It's actually pulling us forward. It's gonna be hard to feel in the video, but you can see the needle going down. Yeah. Quite quickly. So, this thing does have 150,000 kilometers on it now, so it's not a new car. It's not as low mileage as my crown. My crown, I got one that was like truly pristine. This is like a grade three in Japan. Uh, the interior was dirty, it needed to be cleaned up a little bit, a bit of wear. Japanese people like to wear gloves when they drive. I've heard uh, the steering wheels tend to wear. There's a little bit of melted plastic. The kid grabbed a cigarette lighter and experimented with it, so a bit of melted there. Um, not a perfect example, the headlights faded and stuff like that. But it's meant to be a family vehicle, so if it was too nice, I would be like upset when the kids stick stickers to the back of the seat. Um, it's just meant to get us, you know, for $10,000, if it lasts us five years, and we only do a 10, 15,000 kilometers a year, then uh, it'll, the battery savings will, will be made up there. And, uh, I did the math on the on the fuel savings. The battery cost because I rebuilt it myself at three thousand dollars, and the price of fuel now, not let alone what it's going to be in two years, fifty-five thousand dollars is what the batteries are going to pay for themselves. So I told my wife we're not about to sell this until we at least sixty thousand dollars. The batteries better well pay for themselves, and they came with a three-year warranty, so. Uh, someone does, if you ever sell it in working order to someone else, they have a piece of mind knowing that the batteries were replaced in 2020. Uh, uh, January 2023 this year, the batteries 